The People's Climate March was considered a landmark protest and a moment in history for the fight for environmental justice. It was also a moment to change images associated with climate justice. Organizations such as Uprose made sure to represent the frontline communities and youth affected by climate change. These are the people who are affected the most, so it is necessary that they become the face of environmental justice. Climate change affects everybody in, every, in everyday life, uh, in any community. Uh, the changes can affect anybody from their daily life in terms of pollution and how they feel in terms of asthma and local impacts of trucks and, and uh, other types of pollution in their households with the different household products. But it can also affect people in a larger context by how that degrades the environment as a whole. It creates chaos with uh, climate events like Sandy, which devastated my boyfriend's neighborhood, it devastated my neighborhood, and it left everybody trying to help each other and console each other for something that could happen again at any point in time. I think uh, coming to the climate march is a big thing because it's all issues combined in one, under one scope, climate change. So it was really important to come here. Yeah. Well, according to my community, it's predominantly like lower class, middle class family, working class families. So I really feel like climate change uh, is, has a really negative impact for them in general because with the like storms coming up and Sandy and all of these um, issues and like government doesn't take seriously, like for example, what happened at Katrina in New Orleans. So I really feel like climate change is extremely necessary at this point. Just in general, a lot of our communities have been displaced because of, you know, different, um, like, internationally, right? Like, I'm from Peru, and, like, different communities have been displaced because the market value of our products can't compete with American products. Yeah. Well, recently in New York City, they've been do pushing for sort of recycling and compost. And because I live in a poorer neighborhood, it's not a big priority. And I think that, I don't know, personally, I would like to see my neighborhood, which is Harlem, uh, start looking into that more.
There's no tepid water. This is serious, people. We're at the front lines for the front line communities. And this is the Madre Tierra, Nuestra Madre, La Madre que nos parió. I think part of it is just uh, political organizations and global organizations like the UN actually coming, following through with their, with their agreements and actually agreeing upon things that help the population as opposed to what helps the, the government and the politicians economically. I think the biggest problem starting from Kyoto has been the lack of ability to think about how does this impact my people, my constituency, instead of how does this impact my next election. And it's a huge problem with all these major uh, agreements. And I think that's the major one because I think people are ready for change. They want to change. They want to be empowered to change. But it's difficult to do it on a person to person basis in every aspect. These people were present at the climate march. The impacts of climate change have even impacted their homes as people have been displaced and corporations continue to bring pollution into communities. All people should be guaranteed the freedoms granted to them as citizens of the earth and know their communities will be protected in the face of crisis. I think an effective way is just to educate people more. I think if we educate specifically our youth as well, I feel like we don't talk about sustainability or the effects that our actions have on the environment enough in schools. And I think that if we start off young, it's something that they can carry on when they're older and something that they can give to future generations as well.